In this video, I'm going to provide an overview on how you can establish a block-based workflow from Grasshopper to Revit using the conveyor tools. In this Rhino model, I have some setout geometry that's describing a panel assembly. Uh, the objects here involve some structural objects as well as some uh, panel objects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Grasshopper to establish this collection of objects as a block. I'm then going to populate a set of block instances within Grasshopper and then transfer them over into Revit using conveyor tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Grasshopper. And you can see that I have a base definition established that is taking the geometry um, and making reference to it inside of the Grasshopper definition. Um, I'm then using some out-of-the-box uh, Grasshopper components to orient the geometry and populate it across this arc surface. You can see that we have uh, two rows of panels and they are populated along an arc. Um, essentially, I'm using a reorient technique to uh, transmit this kind of collection of objects um, along these curves. You can see we have a plane here and we also have this plane here. So everything you see in this definition at the moment is out of the box Grasshopper. There's no special components. Uh, this might be how someone would use Grasshopper to um, take a, a set of initial objects and uh, populate them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build upon this definition and establish a block-based workflow um, and ultimately import the resultant geometry into the Revit environment. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Proving Ground tab and find the conveyor components. And um, what we always do in this workflow is we end up writing out a conveyor Rhino file. Um, this type of file contains uh, the objects in a 3DM format and ultimately ends up being our final organization that gets imported into the, the Revit environment. So I'm going to work backwards from this. You can see that we need a list of elements, IDs, path, and a, a write toggle. Um, I'm then going to grab a series of block-based components. The first one is going to be a block definition component. This is going to establish the geometric makeup of a block, um, as, long, as well as the base point of the block. I'm then going to grab the block instance component. So after I have some blocks defined, you'll notice that I can then populate those instances uh, into their proper location. So what I'm going to first do here is use this orientation logic to and, and the original um, uh, definition uh, of the geometry to drive the creation of blocks. So with the block definition, I need an input for geometry. So I'm simply going to connect my uh, reference geometry from Rhino into this geometric input. I then need to establish a base plane. So if I look at this set of objects in Rhino here, you can see that um, there is a plane uh, that is being established. This is simply the world origin plane uh, inside of Rhino. Um, it's basically providing an origin point for this, this geometry here. And we can see that that a uh, particular uh, component can be exposed uh, simply by using an XY reference plane. Um, you can see that I have one over here. We're using this in our oriented geometry. And ultimately what I'm going to do is replace this orient geometry component with this block geometry. So I'm going to pass in my XY plane as my base plane. I then need to give this block a name. So I'm going to find a panel component and I'm going to call this the CW panel and referring to it as a kind of curt wall panel. Um, it could be any name that you, you choose. Um, and I'm going to input it there into the name field. And you can see that now our block uh, component for the definition of the block is now active. Now what I want to do is take this block and define a set of instances for this block. So this is a block definition. It's defining the makeup. The instances are where these objects are placed. And this is kind of similar to how we're reorienting our geometry um, in this model. Um, so what I'm going to do is first I need to input my block into the block input here on the block instance. Then I need to define a set of locations where I want this block to exist. And those are also going to be driven by planes. So I have my reference um, base plane here. Um, I 
with my reorient geometry that's being used over here, I have a set of target planes. And I'm going to use these target planes as the location of my instances. And this is going to uh, populate block geometry at these particular locations. So at the moment, it's kind of duplicating the geometry. You can see we have our oriented geometry, and then we also have our block geometry. Well, in this case, I no longer need my oriented geometry. That in some ways is a placeholder um, that's used in a more conventional grasshopper workflow. Uh, but since our objective here is to actually have block instances, we simply only need these two components here uh, to define the block and then place it. We can now work our way to um, exporting this block um, and importing it into Revit using this uh, conveyor write file. And so what I'm going to do here is you can see I have my list of elements that are being populated. These are my block instances. I'm simply going to drag them into the input for um, element here on the write conveyor file. Um, it's also always a good idea to then generate some identifiers for these objects. This allows us to track changes to an object and um, if something changes in the in the grasshopper makeup or, or geometry, I can uh, have that change be reflected in the conveyor update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a process of formatting some identifiers. Very straightforward. I can use the format component here. I'm going to create a um, a uh, kind of sy syntax here for I'm going to call it CW panel. And then the placeholder here is going to be open bracket, zero, close bracket. So I'm going to format that identifier. And I need to get a listing of numbers that is matching up with the number of instances I have here. So I can do this by getting the uh, list length component and getting the total list length of our uh, block instance list. And I'm going to then use a series component to generate some numbers. So we have 32 values. I'm going to input that into zero. Now we have a listing of identifiers. And I'm going to pass those into our IDs. Um, and then finally, what we need to do is establish a path and a toggle for writing the object. So I can go to the params tab here in Grasshopper. I can find a file path. I'm going to right click and set a new file location. And in this case, I'm going to call this a GH block um, export dot 3DM. So this will write a 3DM Rhino file out of Grasshopper. And then finally, I need a write toggle. And in this case, I'm going to use a button. And this will tell us um, when to uh, write a new file um, or an update to the, the file that I've, I've created. So this setup here represents the workflow for transforming and transitioning this type of block instance um, and, and putting it into a file that can be read by Revit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and click this to true. And this is going to author a file. And then inside of Revit, I can go to the Proving Ground tab and find Rhino Conveyor. And I'm going to find that newly authored GH block export file. I'm going to click open there. And what this is going to do is it's going to uh, list an itemization of all of the block instances that are available. You can see that these are blocks. You can see that um, and they're being defined by the CW panel block definition. And I'm going to go to a 3D view. And I'm going to go ahead and click load objects. And it's going to say I have 32 objects. I'm going to click yes. And it's going to say, would you first like to load the block definition? And of course, that is going to be a yes. And you can see that we have one block definition. This is going to take that block definition and recreate it as a Revit family. Um, so I'm going to end up with a family definition for that block based on the block definition. And as this goes through an import process, it's going to be reaching into the Rhino file. And it's going to be uh, recomposing the uh, block as a uh, family. And then we're going to get a confirmation that says that the block has been successfully imported. And after we have that confirmation, we can click OK. And Conveyor is then going to build up the instances of that block. 
So we can see that the, the block definition and its instance is translating very nicely to a family and type relationship. Each of these is of the same family. Uh, they've been brought in as generic models. And we can see that each of these is from that same family. And if I double click into one, we can see that this is native uh, Revit geometry that are being created as freeform elements. Uh, since we're dealing with rather straightforward extrusions, we can also start to see some things like shape handles um, and the ability to modify some of this geometry, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click out of this. I don't need to save any of those changes. So one question that commonly comes up is what happens if you start to update some of this information? I'm going to go back into Rhino here, and I am going to make a couple of changes. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit some of this de defining geometry. I'm going to go here and um, scale this uh, uh, geometry here. Maybe I'll kind of take this panel and I'll scale it down a little bit. So there's maybe a, you know, kind of an opening up top just for the purposes of demonstration, of course. Um, I'm also going to edit this overall global setup here. And we can see that there is a kind of a set of points in my model that are defining this arc. You can see that in our definition here, we've got these three points being referenced. If I drag this object out like so, um, it's going to reposition those block instances in Rhino. Um, so that's going to cause a change uh, across these, these instances and um, would translate down to the, the placed types inside of the Revit file. And I'm going to go ahead and use this toggle and click true and jump back into Revit, find my uh, conveyor file. I'm going to do a refresh on this file. And what we're going to see is that a, a few of the objects have not changed. Um, a number of objects have changed. Um, so what I can do here uh, is then just load in that change. So I'm going to see we have 34 uh, instances, 32 elements will be updated. You wish to continue. I'm going to click yes. Um, I'm going to reload the block definition. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to edit CW panel with the new geometric information. So we go ahead and load that in. And it's going to go through the same process of uh, updating that block definition in the model. Um, again, reaching into Rhino and rebuilding that family. Um, and in this case, it's going to be editing the existing family in the, in the file um, and, and bringing in that information. And we're going to get a confirmation that, yeah, that block definition has been updated successfully. I'm going to click OK. And it's now going to go through this process of updating each of those instances um, and, and reposition them to their new location. So we now have an updated uh, system of panels. Um, the definition itself has been updated, as well as the position of each of those instances has been updated. So this workflow is hopefully going to be very useful for folks that are uh, interested in working with blocks inside of Grasshopper, um, manage those updates um, in a kind of an intelligent way using the setup of family um, you know, type um, and instances. Um, in, in the model. So you have this kind of more intelligent workflow. And then you're also able to combine it with kind of more powerful parametric capabilities that are available in Grasshopper.